Birria, a mainstay of authentic Mexican cuisine, traditionally made with goat meat, but commonly made with beef, particularly in the United States, popular to use as the main ingredient in tacos and burritos, or just served as its own main course. Today, we're making an absolutely from scratch homemade birria using a venison roast from a deer that I personally processed that was harvested during the 2023 hunting season in northern Michigan. Birria is basically a traditional Mexican stew of sorts where you take a roast and you braise it or stew it in a liquid that's comprised of a mixture of various dried chili peppers and several other ingredients, braised until the meat is absolutely falling apart tender, and then prepared and eaten in whatever way you prefer. It seems to have become very common to make birria tacos. There's a million videos about that. I've seen it on Food Network. I've seen it at restaurants in real life, but it's pretty rare that I see a birria burrito. I've seen them, but not that many. And I've been craving a big old burrito lately, and so I figured this was the perfect combination to go with. A birria made with venison meat turned into a fantastic burrito and eaten by me. So there's a bunch of steps we gotta do, a bunch of ingredients we have to sort through. So enough of this intro, let's get right into it. The first thing we really have to deal with is our dried chilies. Most birria recipes call for a bunch of dried guajillo and ancho chilies and often some other type of chili that brings a bit of heat to the whole thing. I happen to have some guajillo and ancho chilies on hand along with a few pasilla chilies I might as well throw in. So all I really have to do to get them prepared is cut them open, remove the stems and as many seeds as I can, and then cut or tear them into smallish pieces. This is the most tedious step for me, but it really only takes a few minutes to end up with a nice bowl full of those chili pieces. Next, I need to do a little chopping. First, I need an onion. White onion is common, but I'm using yellow since I have a ton of them on hand. I'll just give it a rough dice. Then, a couple Roma tomatoes, just roughly cut into some big segments. Ordinarily, I would use two, but these Romas I found are teeny tiny, so I'll go with three. And then I'll just peel a bunch of garlic cloves. No need to chop or mince them. Now let's take a look at the dry seasonings that will go into this birria. I've got some Mexican oregano, cumin, ground cloves, kosher salt, bay leaves, and cinnamon sticks. The only cinnamon sticks I could find at the store were these ridiculous tiny sticks and a little spice jar, so I'll use two of them. One normal sized cinnamon stick is ideal if you can get them. And here is the piece of venison I'll be using. This is a sirloin roast from the deer's hind quarter, also called the football roast for obvious reasons. I need to do a little trimming and cutting to get this roast ready. I want to remove as much of that silver skin, fat, and remaining connective tissues as I can. And since I also need to cut the roast up into some medium sized chunks, this makes it pretty easy to slice that skin and other stuff off of there while I'm at it. And since this meat is getting braised slash stewed for several hours, I'm not going to go crazy or get too neurotic about getting every last bit of silver skin off there. I'll just basically keep trimming it until I've run out of patience. Next, I'm seasoning those meat chunks generously with kosher salt and black pepper, making sure to get some good coverage on all sides of each piece. Now moving over to the stove. I'm going to get some olive oil heated up in my enamel Dutch oven. This is the pot that this entire birria will be made in. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you can use something like a stock pot, but there will be a little bit higher risk for scorching or burning on the bottom. Once that oil is good and hot, in goes the meat. I want to brown each side of each piece of this venison. And I also want to let most of that moisture cook off that's been released from the meat as it begins to cook. I don't want a big pot of liquid when I move on to the next step. Now, birria is supposed to be a bit fatty, and while you get plenty of fat in there when using a cut of beef, venison is incredibly lean. So that means we need to add in some fat, and we're going to do that in the form of pork lard. I'll add about a cup, or just about half a pound. And as that lard starts to melt down, I'll also throw in my onions, garlic cloves, tomato, dry seasonings, including those bay leaves and cinnamon sticks, all those little pieces of dried chilies, 
And while not necessarily a traditional ingredient for birria, I'm also adding in one of these little cans of chipotles in adobo. This will be the only ingredient that adds a bit of heat to the whole thing and also adds a nice touch of flavor. Give all of that a quick stir and then in goes some beef stock. Basically just enough to cover the meat and partially cover everything else. For a batch this size, in this Dutch oven, I used one quart of beef stock. Now to bring everything up to a simmer. Once it's simmering, I'll reduce the heat to very low and cover. At this point, I just need to let this slowly simmer away for two and a half hours. And after two and a half hours, there's a couple things we have to do. First, fish out and discard all the bay leaves and those cinnamon sticks. Next, carefully remove the pieces of meat and set them aside. The meat isn't completely falling apart tender yet, but still take care not to completely tear them apart when you're searching around and grabbing at them. Now that the meat, bay leaves, and cinnamon sticks are removed, I'm transferring everything left from the pot into a blender. I could use my trusty immersion blender for this, but I just got this new blender and I'm excited to try it out. All those chilies, onions, garlic, everything in that pot, I want to puree into a sauce that's as smooth as possible. And I'd say I'm really happy with how well that worked. It's a bit of a messy proposition to use a countertop blender for this, but I'm sure it pureed that a bit better than my immersion blender would have. Anyway, I'll pour that sauce back into the Dutch oven and then nestle my pieces of meat back into it, making sure all the meat is covered. Now I'll return everything back to a very low simmer and the lid goes back on for another two hours. And while we're waiting for that meat to finish stewing, let's make a little creamy sauce that will go in the burrito. A lot of people do something like a creamy avocado sauce, but I really don't much care for avocado, so I'm doing a salsa verde style crema that's super simple. I'll start with some sour cream and then add a little salsa verde. Well, technically I'm adding green enchilada sauce, but the ingredients are basically exactly the same and I already happen to have this can of green enchilada sauce on hand. The key here is that it's mostly made from tomatillo. Then the juice from half a lime, a couple tablespoons of chopped cilantro, and a pinch of kosher salt and black pepper. And now is when the immersion blender comes out. I'll just whip that up and do a smooth sauce. This looks just right to me, but if it was too thin, I could add a little more sour cream to help thicken it up. And I like to transfer it into a little squeezy bottle to make for easy application when it comes time to use. After the birria has finished cooking, I'll use my big scooper thingy to remove all the meat from the pot. At this point, it's absolutely coated and infused with that wildly flavorful sauce. And with barely any effort at all, I'll go ahead and shred that meat up to get it ready for its final burrito destination. As for the sauce, you can see that there's a bit of fat separated and sitting on top. If there was much more of this fat than this, I would probably skim some of it out but it looks like a perfectly good amount for me to leave right in there and stir back in. A quick side note, and this particularly goes out to anyone watching who doesn't live in or around Southern California or Texas. You ever try to find a good quality large tortilla for burritos in the Midwest or pretty much any of the Northern states? It seems like it's almost impossible. And I've actually read entire threads on the internet about this very thing and why it seems to be. And there's not really much in the way of mom and pop burrito shops in Michigan anyway, or at least the parts of Michigan that I tend to be in. You might find a occasional Chipotle or Qdoba or whatever, and their tortillas seem pretty good, but they're a big corporation, so they must have a line on where to get the good stuff. As for me, I've resorted to just buying them online directly from a tortilla company. So I've been using this brand, Mr. Tortilla, and their big, big burrito tortillas are just what I hoped to get out of a, a giant burrito tortilla. Once you heat them up, they become very pliable, no tearing, no splitting. It's just exactly what you need to make a great, big, good burrito. So if you're from the Midwest or are otherwise in a similar boat when it comes to finding a proper burrito tortilla, check out the link in the video description if you want to take a look at the Mr. Tortilla Big Big Burrito Tortillas. For the next couple steps, I'm firing up my steel made flat top griddle. I want to give that birria meat a bit of a sear, basically crisp it up just a little bit and further cook in that sauce over some pretty high direct heat. So after drizzling a little olive oil, I'll just set down a big burrito's worth of meat 
Spoon over just a touch more of that birria sauce and just let it sear for a couple minutes without touching it. Then I'll give it a quick mix and go about another minute before pulling it off the heat. One more quick side note. This was a part that I had to think about a little bit before I decided how I want to do it. When you watch people make birria tacos, they always take the little taco shell and sort of submerge it or smear it in some of that birria sauce and then slap it on a griddle or flat top or similar. Kind of cook in some of that sauce, give it a little bit of a crisp, a little texture, a lot of flavor. But I'm working with a tortilla that's basically the size of a boat cover. So I don't think I'm going to be submerging it in there and laying it daintily in a frying pan. But I did want to fry some of that sauce into the shell. So this is what I came up with. The only sort of flat, shallow pan that I have that's big enough to fit one of these massive tortillas is my round pizza pan. And it ended up working perfectly. I just ladled out some of that sauce all over the pan, then set the tortilla down over it, give it a little wiggle and a turn to make sure it's all evenly coated. And this is one of the main reasons I decided to fire up the flat top rather than say just searing up that meat in a big skillet because this will allow me to lay that entire tortilla flat and give it a nice even cook on the bottom there, toast in some of that sauce. And I'm happy to say that it ended up working great and I would definitely do it this way again. And as soon as I put that tortilla on the flat top, I'll lay down an absolute fistful of Monterey Jack cheese. Just start getting it good and melty while it's already on the griddle. Now we're back over to the counter and you can see just how pretty that cooked in sauce is looking on the bottom of the tortilla. Okay, we've got the cheese down already, now for the meat. The meat is definitely the star of the show here and this is no time to skimp. So I'm absolutely loading it up. And then just a little bit more birria sauce over the top just to keep everything nice and moist. And again, no avocado for me, but I will add some raw diced onion and a good pinch of fresh cilantro. And finally, a healthy squirt of that tomatillo crema sauce. Now for the part that stresses me out much more than it should. I am not an especially skilled burrito roller, so this operation could go sideways real fast. I tend to either blow out the sides altogether or the whole thing ends up a short, fat little monster that is as long as it is wide. And that didn't go too bad at all. It's a little short and fat, but I think it looks pretty darn good. And finally, just to make sure the bottom is good and sealed up, I'll set the whole thing back on the flat top for just a minute. And after what has practically been an entire day of cooking, it's finally time to dig into this absolutely marvelous venison birria burrito. Oh, and I can't forget a little of that birria sauce on the side for dipping. But first, I think it's only reasonable to cut this baby in half and get a good look at the inside of this little beast. And now, a bite. Without a doubt, the best burrito I've ever made. And one of the best burritos I've ever even eaten. It's just an absolute explosion of flavor as soon as you bite into that thing. There's so many different flavors and notes and things happening in that birria sauce. That super tender braised or stewed venison meat, those dried chilies, all the seasonings and spices we threw in there. Just a little spicy from the chipotles and adobo that I put in there. Just on the upper threshold of the amount of spiciness I can handle, but I've said it before, I'm very much a lightweight when it comes to spice. If you are too, you could omit the chipotles and adobo or only put half as much in. But that little tomatillo crema sauce, whatever I'm calling this, that I drizzled on there really kind of helps cool down some of that spice, offset those flavors a little bit with some creaminess, a little acidity from the lime. But if you've never made birria before, but you're a big fan of Mexican cuisine or burritos or tacos or anything in between, Give it a shot. Really the only difficult part might be finding those dried chilies, but I just buy them online because I can't seem to find them around these parts in any grocery stores. And that amount of sauce that I ended up with was more than enough for the piece of meat that I started with. I probably could have gone maybe even twice as much meat for a batch otherwise the same size. But whatever, that's the size venison roast that I wanted to make, so that's what I did. And as I've said about most of these venison recipes, if you don't want to use deer meat, just go ahead and use beef. Do everything else exactly the same, except 
you won't need to add that extra fat in the form of lard. And of course, the full recipe, including all the ingredients for everything that I made here, will be in a link in the video description below. Now I gotta finish eating this absolutely incredible burrito before it gets any colder, but be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future venison videos. Make sure the food you're eating is made out of food. And until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.